With my book, 50 Yards of Fun, since there were so many projects and so many tiny limbs, I went ahead and picked up all of my stitches for these parts rather than knitting everything separately and sewing it together later on. It saves time and frankly, a headache. Here you can see the legs, the tail, the ears and horns and arms are all picked up. I'll show you in more detail where and how to pick up for the limbs. With knit on noses, you are going to want to make an actual circle of stitches on the face rather than straight lines. You'll start fairly low and pick up as many stitches as your pattern calls for. Here I'm going to pick up four. Once you get across those stitches, you're going to go over one stitch and up one round and pick up another stitch. You can see I have five stitches on my needle and that's how many I need, so I'm flipping around to do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna count one more row up from the stitch over, go back a stitch and pick up four more. Then I'm gonna count one row down and one stitch over and pick up my final stitch. Because you are picking up stitches in a circle, you will make a fuller rounder nose than just doing two straight lines of stitches like I will show you later with arms and legs. For the arms on the stitchy body, or anything with neck decreases, you're going to look for the neck decrease round, and that's where you're going to pick up the stitches for the arms. You'll turn the body to the side so you can see what you're doing, and pick up half the stitches called for for the total number in the round. In this case, you're going to just slide the stitches onto the needle rather than picking up and knitting them like usual. When you come to the angled stitch, which is from the decrease round of the body, you're going to want to pick up both of the legs of the stitch, stitch even though they are overlapping each other and closer together than the other stitches. I like to make sure the beginning of the round is on the back of most arms, so once half the stitches are on the needle, I will go ahead and pull the needle out and around and do the same thing for the top part of the arm. I'm using the same needle tip to pick up these set of stitches as I did for the first set of stitches then. And I'm just going to do that one round up. At this point, we have the stitches on the needles, so we're ready to start knitting. I will go ahead and join in my yarn pull out my back needle tip for magic loop method and simply start knitting. This first round can be a little tight and tricky, especially if you're a tighter knitter, but as you go up the arm a few more rounds, it'll get much looser and easier. Once I'm through the first half of the stitches, I'm going to turn and do the same thing on the back needle tip. If you twisted your stitches when you were picking them up, you can just knit into the back loop of the stitch as you come to it to untwist it, or you can also slip it off the needle and turn it the right direction. So there's the first round of the arm, and from here we'll just continue working the arm as the pattern calls for. On the biscuit body, since there aren't decrease rounds like on some of the other body shapes, it can be a little less clear where you want to pick up stitches for the arms. You want to aim for somewhere around here and think of it as the neck. If you actually wrap your hand around the neck area, you can give it more of a definition so you can aim better. You'll just go ahead and turn to the side and pick up stitches like on the other body shapes. And when you're doing the other side and picking up stitches there, just check on the front and aim for about the same spot. When you're picking up the legs on the peanut body base, I aim for the center by looking for the increase rounds from the beginning of the body. You can see that they circle out from the center and there are little bumps from the knit in front and back increases and loops on the other side of the knit and front and back increase. I'm gonna go ahead and start in the loop side of the increase and pick up as many stitches as called for in your pattern. Once I get 
those stitches on my needle, I'm going to rotate around to pick up the other part of the leg. On the way back, instead of the loops, I'm going to go ahead and go through the bumps instead. The first stitches that I picked up for this are going to be the beginning of the round, and they're in the back of the body, which is what I want so that my heel is then in the back of the body. If you find you started on the wrong side later on, you can just do an extra half round and make sure then the heel starts in the back. As long as you do the same thing on both legs, you are just fine. Most of the bowling pin body patterns have a base that you pick up to close the bottom of the body, but in a few cases like the elephant and the bunny, you will leave the bottom edge open and will pick up the legs from the two sides of the cast on edge instead. In this case, I do an actual pick up and knit rather than just sliding the stitches onto the needle. I'll start on one side of the cast on edge, pick up my stitches, once I get half as many as called for in the pattern, I'll turn to the other side and pull my needle through and then go ahead and pick up on the opposite side. I just pull my yarn across the gap. Once I get the first stitch, I make sure it's nice and tight across the gap and then I'll just continue to pick up my stitches. On the bowling pin like this, if you do have a base, like I said, you'll just do the same pickup as you did on the peanut body. Once you get your stitches done and then knit your leg up from here, you'll close up the gap between the two legs using a running stitch or a whip stitch. When you are knitting the ears on the peanut body shape head, the direction you pick up your stitches will determine what type of ear you end up with. For something like bunny ears, you will pick up vertically, one round after another, heading towards the center of the head, then once you have the number of stitches called for in your pattern, you'll flip back around with your needle tip and pick up the stitches that parallel your first line of stitches, just one stitch over, heading down. If you want to do more of a dog type ear that hangs down to the sides, You'll want to work from the front of the head to the back and pick up one stitch after another. Then flip around and work the same stitches but one round up. If you are confused about which type of ear you are working, just refer to the pictures or use your imagination to create something of your own. When you pick up ears for the stitchy body, thanks to the decreases for the head, you have an almost built-in spot from which to pick up ears. You can just run a line of stitches up where the decrease rounds for the head were, and then flip around and run back down the same line of stitches, but one stitch up. If you want dog ears, you'll do the same as you did on the peanut body and pick up across the stitches. But if you want ears like on the pocket guy, you'll pick up vertically on the side of the head more down towards the neck like I'm showing you here. You'll do the same thing, pick up as many stitches as called for, up one set of stitches, and then rotate around and come back down the parallel set of stitches right next to it. I like to make the beginning of the round start on the bottom of the ear here like I showed you. And this is the same way you're going to pick up for the cactus arms or the bat wings or the elephant ears. When you are picking up stitches for a tail, it will be the same on all the body shapes. You will start by turning to the back of your creature, aiming for the lower center part of the body, and picking up two rows, one above another. You'll pick up half the stitches called for, Rotate your needle tip around, move one round up, and pick up the same stitches there. You may want to aim a little lower than I did here. For something with wings or fins, picking up the stitches is very similar to picking up for a tail. You'll want to go ahead and move up one side, vertically, one round after another. Then once you have half your number of stitches for the full round, 
rotate your needle around, move over one stitch, and pick up down the parallel set of stitches. Since the bee's wings are knit flat and not in the round, you would pick up just one row of stitches rather than two like I just showed you and work back and forth from there. Let's start with the noses since they are a little bit different than the other limbs. You can see on the round monkey nose here, it involves picking up in more of a circle rather than straight lines like on other parts. 